Hi, fourth graders. It's Mrs. Valgarino, and I'm so excited to read to you today from outside. Um, you might be able to hear the birds chirping. It is a beautiful day, and I just couldn't resist sitting outside. Um, so I'm going to read to you some of the one and only Ivan. Looks like we're pretty close to being done, so probably a few more read-alouds, um, and we'll be done. Okay. All right, so the one and only Ivan, um, the chapter that we're on is called Add. Good news, huh? Bob said when Max out of earshot. Looks like you might be getting some more supplies. I don't want to paint for Mac, I say. I'm painting for Ruby. You can do both, Bob says. You're an artist after all. While I watch the movie, I try to come up with a new hiding place for my paintings. Maybe I think I could fold them once they're dry and stuff them into not tag. It's a long movie, and the sheriff marries the woman who owns the saloon, which is a watering hole for humans, but not horses. It's been a long time since I've seen a western that was also a romance. I like that movie, I say to Bob. Too many horses, not enough dogs, he comments. And an ad comes on. I don't understand ads. They're not like westerns where you know what, who the bad guy is supposed to be. And they're hardly ever romantic unless the man and woman are brushing their teeth before they face lick. I watch an ad for an underarm deodorant. How do you know who's who if they don't smell? I ask Bob. Humans reek, Bob replies. They just don't notice because they have incompetent noses. Another ad comes on. I see children and their parents buying tickets just like the tickets Max sells. They laugh and join their ice cream cones as they walk down a path. They pause to watch two sleepy-eyed cats, huge and striped, dozing in long grass. Tigers, I know, because I saw them in a nature show once. Words flash on the screen, accompanied by a drawing of a red giraffe. The giraffe vanishes, and I see a human family staring at another kind of family. Elephants, old and young, they're surrounded by rocks and trees and grass in a room to wander. It's a wild cage, a zoo. I see where it begins and where it ends, the wall that says you're this and we are that and this is how it always will be. It's not a perfect place. Even in just a few fleeting seconds on my TV screen, I can see that. A perfect place would not need walls, but it's the place that I need. I gaze at the elephants and then I look over at Ruby, small and alone. Before the ad ends, I try to remember every last detail. Rocks, trees, tails, trunks. It's the picture that I need to paint. Imagining. It's different now when I paint. I'm not painting what I see in front of me, a banana, an apple. I'm painting what I see in my head. Things that don't exist. At least, not yet. Not tag. I pull out not tag stuffing. Carefully, I fill her with my paintings, hiding them so Mac won't sell them. She's large, bigger than Bob, but I still have to crumple a few of them. Bob tries to settle on her for a nap. You killed her, he complains. I had to, I say. I miss your stomach, Bob admits. It's so spacious. When Julia arrives, she notices that I've used up my paints and paper. Wow. Julia shakes her head. You are one serious artist, Ivan. So what do you think Ivan is doing with these paintings? So why are these paintings special or different? Um, why does he want to keep them for, him, for himself and hide them from Mac? So think about what these paintings could be for. One more thing. I finger, my finger painting is sold for $40 with a frame. Mac is, Mac is happy. He brings me a huge pile of paper and big buckets of paint. Get to work, he says. I paint for Mac during the day and for Ruby at night. I nap when I can. But my nighttime pictures, my nighttime picture is, isn't quite right. It's big, that's for sure. When I place all of the pieces on the floor in my cage side by side, the cement is almost completely covered. But something is still missing. Bob says I'm crazy. There's Ruby, he says, pointing with his nose. There's the zoo. There are other elephants. And what's wrong with that? It needs one more thing. I say. Bob groans. You're being a temperamental artist. What could be missing? What do you guys think that Ivan is thinking he's missing in this picture? I stare at the huge expanse of colors and shapes. I don't know how to explain to Bob that it isn't done yet. I'll just have to wait, I say. Something will come to me and I'll know my painting is finally ready. The seven o'clock show. During the last show of the day, Ruby seems tired. When she stumbles, Mac reaches for the claw stick. I tense, waiting for her to strike back. Ruby doesn't even flinch. She just keeps plodding along, and after a while, Snickers jumps onto her back. 
12. I lie in my cage with Bob on my stomach. We are watching Julia do her homework. She doesn't seem to be enjoying it. I can tell because she is sighing more than usual. Again, for the hundredth time, or maybe the thousandth, I wonder what is missing from my painting. And for the hundredth time, or maybe the thousandth, I don't have an answer. Dad, Julia says as George passes by with a mop, can I ask you a question? May I, George Crooks, ask away. Julia glances down at a piece of paper. What's the difference between the word spelled P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L and the one said spelled P-R-I-N-C-I-P-L-E? Well, the first one is the head of a school, like Miss Garcia. The second one is a belief that helps someone know what is right or wrong. He smiles. For example, it's against my principles to do my daughter's homework for her. Julian groans. If I'm going to be an artist when I grow up, why do I need to know how to spell? With a laugh, George heads off. Poor Julia, I think. Gorillas get by just fine without learning how to spell. All these endless letters, those sticks and circles and zigzags, filling up books and magazines, billboards and candy wrappers. Words. Humans love their words. I leap up. Bob goes flying straight into my pool. A word. You know how I feel about wet feet, Bob yells. He scrambles out of the water, shaking his each foot in dismay. I look out my window at the billboard. I can still hear Max's voice in my head. Come to the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade, home of the one and only Ivan, mighty silverback. I count to 12, and then I count again, just to be sure. H. I lay out 16 pieces of poster board. Four down, four across. A perfect square. What are you up to? Bob demands. I'm guessing it doesn't involve sleep. It has to do with the billboard. That sign is a monstrosity, particularly since I am not featured. I grab my bucket of red paint. You're not on the billboard because you're not in the show, I point out. Technically, I don't even live here, Bob says with a sniff. I am homeless by choice. I know, I'm just saying. I study the billboard, then I make two fat lines like broom handles. Another fat line connects them. I stand back. What do you think? What is it? No, wait. Let me guess. A ladder? Not a ladder, I say. A letter. At least I think that's what they're called. I have to make three more. Bob cuddles up next to Not Tag. Why? He says, yawning. Because then I'll have a word. A very important word. I dip my fingers into the paint. Well, what word? Bob asks. Home. Bob closes his eyes. That's not so important, he says quietly. There's the picture of his drawing of the letter H. Nervous. All day long, I knuckle walk circles around my cage. I'm so nervous I can't nap. I can't even eat. Well, not very much anyway. I'm ready to show Julia what I've made. It has to be Julia. She's an artist. She'll surely she'll look, truly look at my painting. She won't notice the smudges and tears. She won't care if the pieces don't quit quite fit together. She'll see past all of that. Surely Julia will see what I have imagined. I watch Ruby trudge sullenly through the four o'clock show and I wonder, what will happen if I fail? What if I can't make Julia understand? But of course I know the answer, nothing. Nothing will happen. Ruby will remain the main attraction at the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade, conveniently located off of I-95. The show is at 2, 4, and 7, 365 days a year, year after year after year. Showing Julia, it's time to show my work. The mall is silent except for the th for Thelma the macaw who is practicing a new phrase. Uh oh. Julia is finishing her homework. George is sweeping outside. Mac has gone home for the night. I grab knot tag and carefully pull out the folded papers so my paintings, page after page, piece after piece of my giant puzzle. I pound on the glass and Julia glances over. Fingers trembling, I hold up one of my paintings. It's brown and green, a corner piece. Julia smiles. I display another picture, and then another, and another, and another, each one a tiny part of the whole. Julia looks confused, but what is it? She asks. She shrugs. It doesn't matter. It's pretty just as it is. Uh-oh, says Thelma. No, I think no. It does matter more paintings. George calls out to Julia. He's done for the night. Grab her backpack, he says, and hurry, it's late. 
Gotta go, Ivan, Julia says. Julia doesn't understand. I have to find the right pieces. I dig through the pile. They're here somewhere. I know they are. I find one, another one, another. I try to hold four up against the glass. Bob, I say, help me, hurry. Bob grabs paintings with his teeth and drags them to me. One by one, I shove pictures through the window crap. They crumple and tear. There's too many pieces. My puzzle is too big. Careful, Ivan, Julia says. Those might be worth millions someday. You never know. She arranges the paintings into a neat stack. I suppose Max's going to want you to sell these at the gift shop. She still doesn't understand. I shove more out of the hole and more and more and all of them one after another. So Ivan's been painting, has he? George says as he puts on his coat. A lot, said Julia with a laugh. A whole lot. You're not taking those home with you, are you? George says. I mean, no offense to Ivan, but they're just blobs. Julia thumbs through the towering stack of paintings. They might not be blobs, blobs to Ivan. Let's leave those by the office, George suggests. Mac will want to try selling them. Although, why would anyone pay 40 bucks for a finger painting a two-year-old could do? I don't know. I like Ivan's work, Julia says. He puts his feelings into them. He puts his hair into them, George says. Julia waves goodbye. Night, Ivan. Night, Bob. I press my nose against the glass and watch her walk away. All of my work, all of my paintings, wasted. I look at Ruby sleeping soundly, and suddenly I know she'll never leave the big top mall. She'll be here forever, just like Stella. I can't let Ruby be another one and only. Okay, we're going to stop right there for today. Um, you can tune into our next video to see um, what happens next as we are nearing the end of our book. So thanks for tuning in, kiddos, and thanks for listening.